It's the largest dam on the place. A lot of paddocks are going quite dry, whereas because we're protecting this from any stock, it is actually like a green oasis. It does lift your heart as you drive past and actually see that, yes, that's what the rest of the place could look like if it rains. As part of this program, we've partnered with ANU and the Sustainable Farms Group around the benefits of farm dam restoration. And we've had a number of landscape champions go down that line, setting up a restoration project where they exclude their stock from the dam to improve quality and improve water quantity that they've got on farm. And marrying that with something like containment really puts you in a, in a good position through dry periods. When we first arrived, this dam was being used by, by livestock. It was quite bared out around it. Um, it's a central part of the property, so it was quite used. And we wanted to set this area aside from stock entering it at all. And that's helped to bring back a lot of the grasses and so on. We've planted a few trees and um, spread some native seed for shrubs and so on. And that's filtered the water as it's come through into the dam. Yeah, the water quality is quite staggering. You can walk out in it. If I'm doing some work in it, you can see your feet as you're in the dam, which when we first started here, it was very cloudy uh, with a lot of runoff coming into it. And now all the reeds and the plants will sort of filter that water coming into the dam. And not having stock on the dam as well means that there's no effluent, everything's kept separate. And the cup and saucer that feeds from this dam is very clear water. Fencing out the farm dams creates that nice biofilter. It gives us high quality water. So this water has less of the pollutants in it that we don't want, less faecal contamination and has lower turbidity. And so this increases the palatability of the water. Livestock want to drink this water and they want to drink more of it. And that then allows them to eat food at a greater rate and then subsequently have better live weight gains. So what we did to create the area, we fenced it off. There was already a fence on one side of the dam, but we fenced the other three sides of it. And we put in a solar panel, which feeds a tank on the bank, which just keeps continuous water up to that. And then that tank on the bank, gravity feeds two troughs. It now feeds probably three, four paddocks, potentially five paddocks, including eventually our stock containment area, which is not that far away. So that obviously means stock aren't having to, to walk as far. We can shut paddocks off and not have to let stock go through a paddock to get to water, which they did have to do previously, and they gain weight better uh, if they're drinking clean water from a trough. So there are definitely benefits from the stock point of view. One of the reasons we did this one as opposed to others was because it's in a, um, a natural kind of water course, but it also is quite close to other wooded areas, so it's, it sort of forms a bit of a corridor added to a pattern as opposed to just being a single isolated uh, dam. So definitely we have lots of different bird life. Getting off the farm in the middle of very dry periods is extremely hard to do, even if it's just for a weekend. But actually having solar and a monitored tank is just one less thing to worry about. We certainly feel it's been worth the investment. A lot of the dams in our rural landscapes were put in the 1950s and 1960s onwards. So there was severe erosion around this time. And so there was a focus on trying to physically slow the water. But the work that we're doing now is showing that you can get a lot greater benefit if you also add in a lot of vegetation. So this holds the soil together, but we know that stock love to congregate around dams. And so if we fence out these dams, it allows the vegetation to establish. This slows the movement of water through our landscapes, but it also allows it to soak in more and it also cleans the water. We're at Spring Hill, which is 10 k's west of Gundagai. This dam that you can see was already in when we bought the property. The issues above the dam was the erosion factor because the stock had access to it. That would affect the water quality coming into the dam and it was affecting the health of the creek and creating erosion because they just never got out of it. Since we've owned it, we've changed a lot of the fencing around and did some work with the LLS and we got a grant and we put 600 trees in above the dam and fenced off all that creek system above it and limited the access to the stock on the other side as well so they've only got two watering points now. It's probably just about picking your site. Use like a good hard bank and keep it fairly narrow I think like I've made one side fairly wide and it doesn't seem to work as well on the, what it does on the other side. You're going to have those access points, keep them fairly tight. It's allowed all the gully above it to grass up 
and the trees are uh, getting away. They've had a couple of good years and they're starting to grow really well. We, we tied it in with the already existing shelter belt behind us and it's helped the, the water clarity and quality all the way more beneficial for the cattle compared to just drinking out of a muddy dam that they used to get in. And you know, there's definite benefits there for the stock as well. It's definitely worth doing if you've got the right dam in the right place. We've got some dams that we've probably worked on that are maybe ten or fifteen thousand dollars by the time you do fencing and replanting and, and a small amount of reticulation. And then we've got projects that have been well above that, quite extensive, and we're supplying water right across the farm. So my advice for farmers if they're looking at doing some a farm dam restoration is get some advice. Maybe have one of our staff come out and, and plan a project out with them and then see where we can source funding to help support those projects.